I'm Rahul, right? I'm an assistant uh, professor in the civil engineering department, right? And uh, what got me into environmental science, I've always been very academic in nature, right? I like reading uh, academically complex things. I always saw myself going into the academic line and doing research and doing teaching. So, and then it fit beautifully that I could teach environmental science as well. So, and like introduce students to the complexities, even from a scientific standpoint and from a real life standpoint, the things that contribute to the problems that plague the environment and the complexities of the solutions that are required. I also had a lot of interest in nature in general, but it took me a lot of time to connect those two uh, together and bring it into one sort of interest. So yeah, that's how I got into it. Uh, I mean, environmental studies is like, oh, the environment is going bad, you should plant trees and save water and things like that. But it's, the problem is not that simple and the solutions are not that simple. So you really need to go into depth of it, see how the problem manifests. What the, That itself is very interesting, how small things manifest into such large problems. And then seeing the actual solutions that are required to tackle this issue. So that is interesting if you give it a chance. And I've seen that a lot of students do pick up on that. And even if they don't make it their, like, you know, their life's work or careers or whatever, I know it's going to stick with them. My introduction to the environment happened because of bird watching and it happened because when I was a student in Manipal there was a teacher who used to take us bird watching uh, and she didn't do it for a classroom she just said you know you should come for birding and that was my first foray into it and after that I got hooked onto the entire environment so it was not just birds that I was looking at we look at I look at amphibians look at butterflies we look at everything I take students out for birding because they are probably the most easiest things to watch you don't require any specialized information to go outside and watch birds you just need to know when to go and where to go and that's about it and they're everywhere around you once you see them it's very hard to unsee them you can't go back to saying that endpoint looks the same every time you are you know you're feeling a pulse of a much larger environmental or a natural rhythm and that's quite cool I think so I've been doing it for a very long time and mostly as a hobby but then uh, with the advent of citizen science initiatives so like I submit all of my data on eBird and it's an online citizen science portal which was initiated by Cornell University and then they record uh, information that hobbies like me produce all over the world and then they come up with very interesting uh, you know discoveries like migration patterns uh, migration movements how are these birds moving across the globe and things like that so when you see that a part of your contribution has gone to show that you feel like you've contributed something and you have contributed you've contributed to an actual piece of science that you know, that has improved our understanding of the natural environment in my opinion, like if you look at the way certain researchers write about the current environmental situations or they write when they write opeds or when they write editorials, it's very bleak, it's very discouraging. But at the same time, uh, you have to be optimistic, right? Um, it will be bad if nobody does anything about it. That is a guarantee. But if you work at it and if you look at the problems seriously and in closely right, and then work on it in, in that respect, I think it, ha it still has a good shot of recovering. Uh, me prescribing solutions to the students wouldn't be a good way of going about it. So let's say if you're a computer science engineer, you will have the solution which maybe uses your specialities. Work at that angle or in whatever way, maybe you just like to draw. That is also a nice way of tackling this problem, raising awareness and things like that. But more than that, I would just say just fall in love with the environment. You're in Manipal, right? 
it's not very hard like this is if you can't fall in love with the environment here you can't do it anywhere else because everything is just so close and convenient and beautiful most people don't see it as a personal problem it's a problem but it's it's like it's like you're not worried about poverty till you are poor yourself because it's not something that afflicts you personally so just if you start doing that if you just try to give it a chance right and fall in love with the environment i think that's more than anything that you could do uh for the environment at this point yeah you face a lot of setbacks in life and every time i had issues or major drawbacks i always had the environment to go back to i just took a couple of days off went for a trek and then i just slowed down for a couple of days just you know lost myself in the environment or in, in nature take the time to step out even if it is to a local garden you don't have to go anywhere fancy just step out breathe and you'll be fine right let you are a part of nature let nature soothe you when you are in, you know when you are so you know highly bound up and you'll be fine